by telling the instructor to check the lights for you. They're gonna help you check the lights. But after that, we're gonna check the front of the truck. We're gonna be working on the engine compartment. We're gonna do check the light reflectors, the steering, the front drive axle, including the suspension and the brakes. After that, you're gonna start with the inspection. So first you wanna start by checking under the truck. You wanna make sure there's no leaks. There's no water, no oil, no cooling leaks. Then you're gonna go up, make sure you to check the truck for, make sure it's not leaning. If it's leaning to one side, it could be a flat tire, it could be a bad suspension. Then we go to the lights. We wanna check all the lights, but first we wanna check the high beam and the low beam, make sure they're clear in color with no missing covers. Then we're gonna check the signal lights, the four-way flashes and the marker lights on top. Those are all amber in color. Then we're gonna go to the windshield. We want to make sure that the windshield is properly mounted and secure with the weather strip around the windshield for no leaks. The windshield shouldn't have any cracks. Make sure it's clean with no illegal stickers and it should always be clean for visibility. Then we check the wipers. The wiper arms should be working properly and make sure that the blades have enough soft rubber so they clean the windshield when it rains. Then we go to the hood. Make sure that the hood is easy open, easy close. So we open the hood. Then we go into the passenger side. We're going to be working on the passenger side. So we're going to check our tires. Make sure the tires have no less than 432 of tread depth and make sure that the tire pressure has no less than 110 psi. So we check that with the high pressure gauge. We also want to check the tires. Make sure they don't have any cuts, no tears, no bubbles. Make sure they're not leaking any air on both sides. We want to make sure that there's no space in between the tire and the rim. And the rim should be securely mounted with no cracks, bends, or illegal welds. Make sure it doesn't have any extra holes. Then we're gonna check our lug nuts. Make sure that the lug nuts are tight and secure. They shouldn't have any rust because rust is a sign they might be loose. Then in here, we have the hub seal. We wanna make sure that the hub seal is filled to the right level. Make sure it's not leaking and it should be properly secure with the bolts at all times. Then we check the air valve or the valve stem, which is right here. It should be straight with no cracks or bends and it should be secure with the cap with no leaks. Now right behind the rim, we have the brake drum. The brake drum is metal, so we want to make sure it's not cracked or bent and no illegal welds, and it should always be clean with no grease and no oil. Then we check the brake shoes. They're inside of the, of the brake drum right there. The brake shoes are not cracked or broken, and they shouldn't have less than a quarter inch of thickness. From there, we're going to go into the brake chamber. Make sure that the brake chamber and the brake chamber clamp are securely mounted with no cracks or bends and no illegal wells and no leaks. It should be secure with the clamp with no missing bolts. Then we go to the brake chamber hoses. Make sure that the brake chamber hoses have no bubbles, no cuts, no tears, and no leaks. From there, we're gonna take us down to the slack adjuster. Make sure that the slack adjuster is always at a 90 degree angle right here. Shouldn't be cracked, bent or broken, no missing bolt, no missing pins. Then we check our push rod. The push rod should be straight with no cracks or bends and it should be properly secure. It shouldn't have more than one inch of free play. After that, we're gonna start checking our suspension. So we go to the shock. Make sure that the shock is securely mounted to the frame with no missing bolt. Make sure it's straight, it has no cracks or bends and no leaks. Then we check our leaf springs. Make sure that the leaf springs are straight. They have no cracks, no bends, no illegal wells and they're not shifted. They should be secured to the Lee spring hanger. The lee spring hanger should be properly mounted and secured to the frame, no missing bolt. It shouldn't have any cracks or bends or illegal wells. Then we check our spacer and the two U-bolts. Make sure that the spacer is not cracked, bent or broken, and it should be secured with the two U-bolts. Make sure that the U-bolts are straight, no bends and no illegal wells, and it should be secure to the axle with the nuts on the bottom. Then we go up and we check our, our chassis frame. Make sure it's straight with no cracks or bends or illegal wells and no extra holes. Then we go up and we're gonna check our cooling tank. Make sure that the cooling tank is properly mounted and secure with the bolts. It should be filled to the right level. Make sure it's not leaking any, any coolant and it always secure with the cap so it doesn't leak. Then we check our cooling tank hoses. They should be secure with the clamp with no bubbles, no cuts, no tears and no leaks. From here, we're gonna come down and we're gonna check our alternator. The alternator should be securely mounted with no missing bolt. There's no cracks, no bends, and make sure it's working properly. It's not damaged. The alternator wires should be secure with no cuts, no frays, 
and no copper wire showing. Make sure it's working properly. Then right behind the alternator, we have the water pump. The water pump goes in here. It should be securely mounted to the engine block with no missing bolt. It's not cracked, bent, broken, and it's not leaking. The water pump hoses should be secure. We have one here coming down on the top and this one. It should be secure on both sides with no bubbles, no cuts, no tears, and no leaks. After that, you want to tell the instructor that the alternator and the water pump, they're both belt driven. We want to make sure that the belt has no more than three quarter inch of play and it shouldn't have any cuts or tears and it should be working properly. Then we're going to go to the other side. On this side, you're going to start by checking the, the oil with the dipstick. You want to make sure that the oil is filled to the right level. And if it's low in oil, we were added through here. We were added by gallons and not by quarts. Then we come out here and then we're gonna check our air compressor. The air compressor is right here. It should be properly mounted and secure with no cracks, no bends, and no leaks, no missing bolts. And the governor on this truck is on the other side. After that, we gotta check the air compressor hoses, which is all these. They should be properly mounted and secure with no bubbles, no cuts, no tears, and no leaks. Then we check our power steering pump. The power steering pump is under the air compressor. It's kind of hard to see, but just say right there is the power steering pump. It should be properly mounted and secure with no missing bolt. It's not cracked or bent and no leaks. Make sure the power steering pump has got one hose, which is this one. The power steering pump hose should be secured with the clamp with no bubbles, no cuts, no tears, and no leaks. Right after that, you're going to tell the instructor that the air compressor and the power steering pump, they're both gear driven, so it means no belts. After that, we're going to go to the power steering reservoir. Make sure the power steering reservoir is properly secure with the bolt. It shouldn't be cracked or broken. And make sure it's tight with the cap with no leaks. Then we check the power steering reservoir hoses. We have right here, make sure they're properly secure with the clamp with no bubbles, cuts, tears, and no leaks. After the power steering reservoir, we're going to go into the steering shaft. The steering shaft should be straight with no cracks or wells, and it should be secured with the U-joints. We have one on the top and one right here on the bottom. Make sure the U-joints are always greased and no missing bolts. Then we go to the gearbox. The gearbox should be securely mounted to the frame, and no missing bolt. Make sure it's not cracked or broken and no wells. Make sure it's not leaking any oil. The gearbox has got two hoses right here. Make sure they have no bubbles, no cuts, no tears, and they're properly secure with the clamp at all times. From there, we're going to go into the steering linkage system. The steering linkage system is divided into five parts. So we want to start with the pitman arm. Then we have the drag link right here. We have the upper, and then we have the lower. We have the lower control arm right there. Then on the bottom right here, we're going to have the tie rod. Make sure that the tie rod, all five parts, should be securely mounted with no cracks, no bends, no illegal wells, and they should be properly secured with a castle nut and a cotter pin. After that, we're going to go up and we're going to check our electrical wire system right here. Make sure that the wires are properly secured with no cuts, no frays, and no copper wires showing. Make sure they're working properly. Then we check our service lines. The service line should be properly secured with no bubbles, cuts, tears, and no leaks. Then we gotta go, this is section A, which is the engine compartment. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna finish up with the coupling devices. So right here, we have the uh, service lines. We're gonna start by checking the airlines, which is the blue line is the service line. The red one is the emergency line. They are both secured to the connector with no leaks and no missing bolts. Make sure that both lines have no cuts, no tears, no bubbles, and no leaks. And both lines should be secure to the trailer with the glad hands. Make sure the glad hands are not broken and no missing bolt. And inside the glad hand, we have a seal. We want to make sure it's not damaged, not torn, and not, not leaking. After that, we're going to check the green line, which is the electrical line. The electrical line should be properly secured to the tractor with the pigtail. Make sure the pigtail is not missing any bolt and it's secure with a cap. The line itself has no cuts, no frays, no copper wire showing. And it should be secure to the pigtail in the trailer. Make sure the pigtail is not broken, no missing bolt, and always secure with a cap. All three of the lines should be secure with the hanger 
So you shouldn't be dragging or getting tangled or pinch on the catwalk. This is our service line. Now we go into the uh, fifth wheel. The first thing you want to check on the fifth wheel is you want to check the apron, which is up on top right here. We want to make sure it's straight with no cracks, bends, or holes, and no illegal wheels. Then we're going to check our fifth wheel skid plate. Make sure it's securely mounted with no missing bolt. It shouldn't have any cracks or bends or illegal wheels. And there should be no space in between the apron and the skid plate. It should always be greased for easy turns. Under the fifth wheel, we have the sliding fifth wheel locking pins. It should always be in the locking position right here. It shouldn't have any cracks or bends and no illegal wheels, and it shouldn't be missing any pins right here. Then we check our platform. This is a platform. It should be properly mounted and secured to the frame with no missing bolts. It shouldn't have any cracks, bends, or illegal wells. It should be properly secured. I don't know how we're going to do this. Then after the platform, we're going to go and we're going to check. Inside of the fifth row, we have... Is there a way you can get it? Inside of the fifth row, we have two parts. We have a kingpin in the middle, and we have two locking jaws. We want to make sure that the kingpin is always straight with no cracks, bends, and no illegal wells, and it should be secure with the locking jaws. The locking jaws should always be in the locking position, not cracked or bent, and no illegal wells, and always grease. That's it for that inside of the fifth row. Then we come outside, and we're going to be Finishing up with the release arm. We want to make sure that release arm is always in the locking position. It shouldn't be cracked, bent, or broken, and it should be properly secure. Right after that, you want to tell the instructor that this truck has no safety latch, and we want to make sure we have enough clearance in between the frame and the landing gear for making sharp turns.